Women's Final Four set. Jack, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Hutton. Excited to be with you on this Tuesday. Yes. We, uh, well, after the show yesterday, for the first time, I'm making sure I get home in time to watch Caitlin Clark. Normally, if I was on, I'll stop and see what's going on, right? Uh, different yesterday with the rematch being Iowa and LSU. And as predicted, regardless of outcome, we get what we want. There is a fun game, entertaining game, post game. There's rivalry, race, good versus bad. Depending on your perspective, right? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on both sides. Yeah. And the reaction to the win or the loss and how you perceive that to be. Chad, we got that. Everyone got what they wanted with Iowa and LSU in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, and, and namely, ESPN and the NCAA yeah. got what they wanted because right. it is a huge rating draw for Caitlin Clark, any game she's involved in. And now that traveling circus moves on to Cleveland, Ohio, and the Final Four. ESPN paid $920 million to the NCAA over an eight-year period. That's their contract for 40 different NCAA championships. That breaks down to $115 million per year. $65 million of that per year is for the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. Now, the NBA has long subsidized the WNBA. It's not been a moneymaker for the NBA. Maybe that's going to start to turn. There are a lot of sports in colleges across America that are essentially subsidized by the football program or the men's basketball program. This is just a reality of business. I'm sorry to Ole Miss's women's coach if this insults you, but that's the reality of finances with a lot of these sports. Women's college basketball is now turning into a profit and revenue generator. Certainly been that for Iowa and their university. And now it's becoming that for ESPN. The people at ESPN must be thrilled right now because that's a, that's a steep commitment with that $65 million they're paying for the entire tournament. But they're getting the rewards of that now. You had 4.9 million people watch Iowa and West Virginia in the second round. You had 6.9 million people watch Iowa, Colorado in the Sweet 16. We haven't got the number yet, but I'm sure it's going to be enormous for that game last night, which was a repeat of last year's national championship game. That was the most watched women's college basketball game of all time. So bottom line is this. The bottom line is good. It's good for ESPN. It's good for women's college basketball. Caitlin Clark is a draw. And yes, we are here on this show to state the obvious. Of course, people are picking their favorite in this one based on the racial line. It happens. You'd be foolish not to act like that doesn't happen in America right now. Is it right to do that? No, but it happens. People are doing that. So it causes division. It causes people to pick a side. Bird versus magic was the exact same way in the 80s. It happens all the time. Caitlin Clark advances, and she shows why she is the best women's basketball player of all time, and it's becoming something that's not even that close. And Hutton, the last thing she has to do, to cement it is go win a national title. And she's got a chance to do that now at the Final Four. 41 points, 12 assists, brought down seven boards, 94-87, uh, the final, and uh, tied at halftime. I mean, the game delivered. And it, uh, Iowa got up big to begin the game in the first quarter. LSU comes storming back. Uh, Angel Reese ends up with, what, 20 boards in this game? A, a few blocks as well. I think she had, well. like, 17 points and 20 rebounds. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, and I, I know she's been playing on sort of a bum ankle, too, and um, still put up those numbers. Here are the latest accolades for Caitlin Clark. Uh, second career 40-point, 10-assist NCAA tournament game. All other players have zero. That's in any tournament, men or women. You've got the third career 40-point NCAA tourna tournament game for her. That's the most all-time by any player. Nine threes, tied a women's tournament record, and she broke her own career high. Uh, the most... Th career three-pointers in women's Division I history, 540 of those. And the most career assists and three-pointers in women's NCAA tournament history. Chad, uh, she's fun to watch, you know, pulling up from where she is on the court and draining, and then doing that in the moment where you know they've been thinking about not just the loss to LSU, 
and what could have been the title. But the post game, all the trash talk, and she's a, a Kaylin Clark's about that too. Yeah. She doesn't mind the trash talk. No, a fierce competitor. But to Kaylin Clark. To deliver on the stage when you get that one moment in the final game against Angel Reese and LSU, and we mentioned yesterday it was it's Iowa LSU, but it's really Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese. Even though the Reese isn't pulling the assignment of defending her. Uh, that's the clutch aspect that makes her great. You know, you, you can have the different moments of in the NCAA tournament. You have the Cinderella moments. You have the Golke, for instance, who comes off the bench and hits 10 threes against Kentucky. But to do it on a consistent basis and to do it on the stage, that takes you from good to great and from great to elite. And she's got that. When all eyes are on her, she's doing that. Props. Yeah, and look, coming through in the biggest moments is absolutely in the fabric of the DNA of players that are elite and some of the greatest of all time. And she's done that once again with this performance. 41 points, 7 rebounds, 12 assists, 9 for 20 from 3. To win a national title now, they're going to have to go through UConn UConn's and likely next. South Carolina, who's undefeated. So dethroning Angel Reese and LSU after all the trash talk a year ago. Right. And having that performance is enormous. But if she's able to beat Gino Oriema and Paige Beckers in UConn and then beat undefeated South Carolina and give them their only loss of the season on a Tuesday night in a national championship game, they will write folk songs about this girl in Iowa. I mean, that that is the stuff. It's already the stuff of legend. I watched a video last night. Someone sent me of a mashup of Pistol Pete in college next to Caitlin Clark and some of the same ball handling and passes behind the back, hitting girls in the face with the ball, not ready for it, yeah. that would have had a layup. I mean, almost ahead of her time in a lot of ways, the same way that Pistol Pete was. Last night, there were some bad passes too, some careless passes, but I was blown away by her passing ability at times. The full court heaves all the way down the, the, the court to someone for a streaking layup. She's incredible. It, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. And, I mean, we, we get into the culture war part of it because it's just unfortunately a reality of everything in America right now. But I, my takeaway is not what's wrong with our country when I watch Caitlin Clark. My takeaway is pure joy. I, I, I am purely happy when I watch her play basketball. It you, is fun to watch. Are you describing an NBA player? Uh, with her? Yeah. Steph Curry? No, with Caitlin Clark. Michael Jordan? No, I'm saying, are you? do you see an NBA player with Caitlin Clark? Oh, good. yeah. Uh, no, I, I do not. There's one person that does, though, right? <laughs> yeah, so Ice Cube not, you know, offered the, the $5 million contract to Caitlin Clark what, last week to join the... Uh, the big three league. And we went through and dissected, you know, three on three half court and the size difference compared to Caitlin Clark for even the big three league. This was a big three comparison, right? Not the NBA. Well, just to be clear, as we, as we set this up, she's five ten, roughly what? 155 pounds. Caitlin Clark. She drains threes from all over the place. Rob Parker believes that, well, don't put boundaries. He's, he's on board with, with, with uh, Reggie Miller, Reggie Miller. Don't put boundaries on Caitlin Clark. Uh, Rob Parker of The Odd Couple, with an odd take, along with Chris Broussard, who's uh, thinking, what are, you, what are you saying? I am convinced that Caitlin Clark should play for an NBA team, Chris, not a WNBA team. And I want to say this before you poo-poo me or before you tell me I'm a sugar nut, I'm crazy. You beyond a sugar nut. Okay? She ain't ain't good enough. Hold on. Hold on. Let me say this. This ain't ain't no stunt like Eddie Goodell. It must be because you should know. You've covered the NBA. Uh, She good enough to play in the NBA? Yes, she is. And I'm going to tell you why. Embarrassed. This is not Eddie Goodell with the White Sox, Christian. Remember they had the small person who gave up the bat and they tried to get him to walk every at bat? This is not that. Well, of course this is not, not a sideshow. This is not the bearded lady at the circus. This is not what it could be. The NBA right now is so soft as far as physical play. They allow almost anyone to just take three-point shots. And I believe... I really do that she could put up threes in this man's NBA. This is not 2004. 
This is not the 90s, Chris. This is an NBA where the three ball is open. It's open to be had. And if you if you have players and you settle up somewhere. Why is it Jimmer Fredette in the NBA? Because he can't play. He's not, he's not the all-time leading scorer. He's better than scorer. Caitlin Clark. He's not the all-time leading scorer. We just saw Steph Curry. We just saw Steph Curry go up against a female in a three-point shoot, shooting contest, right? It's not about skills. Chris, it's about athleticism. It's about I'm, size. It's about strength. I, we, this is we, embarrassing for you. <laughs> yeah. That seems very manufactured to me. I, 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 there was almost like a uh, glimmer just, in his eye and a smile as he started to say it. I know. Where I feel like this was something gotta intentionally be, right? said that was really stupid. It's got to be. To get clicks and to get people to play it on their show and to get people to respond to it. I, I can't imagine Rob Parker. I can't imagine Rob Parker actually believes what he's saying. I, I think he's trying to make a joke about the lack of defense in the NBA by claiming Caitlin Clark could play in the NBA. But the problem with him doing this is people are going to think that this is legit, and then they're going to use it as ammo for their argument that, oh, you know, men and women uh, physically and athletically are the same, and Caitlin Clark <laughs> is the greatest women's player of all time in college and the leading scorer could absolutely make an NBA roster. And comparing it comparing it to a three-point shooting contest. Yeah, it, Chris Broussard brings up Jimmer Fredette. Jimmer Fredette is six foot three. Six foot three. Great three-point shooter. Uh, he's probably 200. I'm going to look it up right here. 220 pounds. Okay. Okay, she is... 70-pound difference. 154 pounds at 5'11", maybe 6 feet, probably more like 5'10". Jimmer Fredette is 70 I, pounds heavy. Here would also be my question for Rob Parker. Who is she guarding? Right. I mean, who are you put, matching up and saying, Caitlin, go guard oh, but he, he, he's saying there is no defense. Six five point guard. He's saying there is no defense. I mean, he, he's just... He's viewing it from the all-star game level. Yeah, that oh well, which I is mean, a sideshow. Could she maybe score a three because someone doesn't pick her up before she half can court? Hit a three, yes, and she hits a half quarter. She can hit a three, or she shoots a three from threes deep because there, she's not being covered. But also, could any <laughs> NBA guard just decide Caitlin Clark will not score in this game and make it their life's mission to defend her ninety-four feet and hold her from scoring? Yes. Who the was, answer is yes. If an NBA player decided, I'm going to pick Caitlin Clark up full court, and I'm not going to let her score, they could it, do that. Was it B.J. Armstrong? Who was it in the, the last dance that said that they had a great first half or a great first quarter and talked trash to Jordan, and Jordan was, said, you're, you're not going to score again? Yeah, it was, uh, as B.J. Armstrong famously said in the documentary, he said, you know, I had a moment. I had my moment, and Michael wasn't going to let me have another moment. He had a game winner. Uh, he hit a shot for the Hornets. Okay. At the but with like five seconds left, and he started talking trash the Bulls bench, and they won Game One in Chicago of a playoff series, and that's the next cutaway shot was Jordan with a baseball bat in the locker room smoking a cigar yeah. and looking like a crazy person talking about how so, no one's going to do anything to them ever again, and he shut BJ down. From you're that point you're saying uh, Cade Cunningham in the NBA would do that. Cade Cunningham could pick up Caitlin Clark full court. And I love Caitlin Clark. And I hate of course. that. I hate that Rob Parker says something stupid. And now the conversation has to be about how much better men are at basketball Her, physically than women. But this is the reality of the situation. She couldn't, um, she would not score a basket if an NBA player decided she was not going to score a basket. Her fiance, is it right? Her fiance works for the Pacers. Yep. Connor so McCaffrey. Rob Parker is saying that she should be playing for the Pacers instead of the Fever. That's that is what, and it's not a circus, not a sideshow, not a sideshow. This is not be. Bill Veck. This is not you know the, Maybe. the the little person or the little human or however they described it. They put into bat to walk every time. This is legit from him. Right now, uh, the Detroit Pistons, the Washington Wizards. You mentioned the Hornets. They're right there. The Hornets and the San Antonio Spurs have the worst records uh, in the in the association. Maybe Popovich brings in Caitlin Clark like Becky Hammond. Oh, it's just so so stupid to play with Wimby. I mean, her in the Big Three was dumb enough, but it was a good promotional publicity Ice stunt Cube by it. Ice Cube to throw that out it's there. Not even though she's not going to do it. But this is just l ludicrous, and I'm as down on the NBA as anyone, and the lack of defense is played and everything else, but. To think that Caitlin Clark deserves a spot 
over a lot of men who have played the game in college at a high level in the NBA is insane. Let, let's just enjoy I'm, the greatness we're watching in the women's game. Women, he, here's a novel concept, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that we, we talk a lot about here at OutKick. Women play sports against women in team sports, and men play sports against men in team sports, and we look at them different, and we don't <laughs> always have to cross over the two. There doesn't have to be a Venn diagram of man playing sport and woman playing sport. And to take it a step further, Hutton, let's not put men in women's sports, whether it be individual or team competition, yes. and let's just leave them separate and discuss them on their own merits. Because right now the merits of the women's game is pretty damn good, led by Caitlin Clark. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying watching her. I'm enjoying watching South Carolina women play. Paige Beckers is incredible. This Final Four is an enormous draw. Enjoy it if you're a fan of women's sports. Let's stop with the Venn diagram between the men's game and the women's game and just enjoy the women's game where it is right now. It's at an all-time high. And viewership is going to show that. And the biggest reason why that is, we watched her score 41 points last night. It's Caitlin Clark. It's well, really simple. Just I, I looked up the, the Pistons' next three games. It's the worst record in the NBA, okay? Trey Young would draw... Caitlin Clark in that matchup. Derrick Rose. <laughs> Derrick Rose is still in the league. He wow. plays for the Grizzlies. Good for him. And uh, Ben Simmons on the roster for the Nets. You remember Derrick Rose when he was at Memphis and his ability to guard someone full court when he decided to? Now think about Derrick Rose at yeah, his size deciding to muscle up 154-pound Caitlin Clark. It's just... So, I, you know what I this just, reminds me of? It reminds me, Ronda Rousey was running roughshod through the UFC women's division a handful of years ago. And there started to be a clamoring, up, this isn't entertaining anymore. You know, it's 30, 45 seconds. Um, needs to fight a man Submission, now. and, uh, you know, the pay-per-view, was, it was a spectacle because she was so good. Well, then Holly Holm came in and beat her ass. And no one started clamoring for Holly Holm to go to the men's division. Uh this reminds me of that same sentiment where you, there's the domination factor and you're automatically going, oh, just let her go to the NBA. You know, it's uh, Ronda Rousey would even admit, no, I'm not going to fight in the UFC men's division in the bantamweights. I mean, women's basketball players will, would admit this to you all the time. Hun, I sent you a video over the weekend of the Michigan State yeah. practice yes. squad yes. playing the Michigan State women's team. And the practice squad And of? it was someone, it was just a highlight video. Of, of dudes. Yeah, it was all guys, and a lot of women's programs in college have guys practice against them. Yes. And the caption was something like, man, it looks like a lot of fun playing for the, pra the women's basketball practice squad at Michigan State. And it's a bunch of guys that were out of shape slightly in college just putting up a highlight reel on the Michigan State women's team in practice left and right. It's which, so absurd. Which doesn't take anything away from what is taking place no. in the women's uh, tournaments no. or the product right now. Stupidity bothers me, and this is just really dumb, well, and it's an awful, awful, dumb opinion. And I, I, I want to move on past this because it's taking away from something truly great happening right now with Caitlin Clark and this Iowa women's team. It's so much well, fun to watch. And you don't have to be fake with the storyline. That, no. that felt so manufactured. It you don't fake. have to go above and beyond to appreciate the storyline that's taking place right now. Uh, in the storyline postgame last night, Angel Reese and uh, the LSU Tigers, they, they fall in this rematch from the national championship after winning last year. And, well, here's reaction from Angel Reese discussing the negativity and the, the height of that negativity that she heard from or faced throughout the season. I don't really get to stand up for myself. I mean, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore and I just try to stand strong. Like, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So. 
I just want to always just know, like, I'm still a human. Like, all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, and, but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything, and I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me, and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you. But keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. The, the death threats, uh, being sexualized, that is awful. Um, but Angel Reese, absolutely, and then the LSU team, that roster, played into the villain role. And I, but prior to all of these comments, you have other players that are saying, well, the media will twist this. They call people villains. Um, that, they, that doesn't get to Angel Reese. That they use the media and the hate from the media to fuel them throughout the season based on the reaction of last year going into this year. And there's a lot of pressure with that, too. It's, uh, I, it's easier to be the favorite than it is the hated. And they were both uh, throughout much of this season and last season. But, Chad, they knew what they were doing. They played into it. Post games, even this, throughout this tournament, Kim Mulkey is playing that role. Uh, she's genuine with it. That's her, and she's unapologetic about it, as is Angel Reese. But had they won the game, I don't think the tears are flowing. And I don't know if we hear about that necessarily. Um, but the, there's always those that are going to be extremely stupid um, and awful and wrong on social media and beyond. But at 21 years old, Angel Reese, facing a lot of pressure with it, is doing a lot of different things with NIL, rightfully so. I mean, it's, it's perfect for her, uh, that whole structure. But it was her versus Caitlin Clark. And this go around, Caitlin Clark helped win the game. And at some, some, sometimes I did feel like it was a game off the court, too, of who's doing the right thing, who's showing class, who's not. Uh, and nowadays, those things can blend together on who is and who isn't. But, Chad, this is, it's not her fault that she's getting death threats. I'm not saying that. But if she's not liked, they're, they're admitting that they use that to fuel the roster, trying to go back to back. It, it, not being liked. Everyone loves love. And if you're not, well, you're going to use it as motivation. And they did. Have you ever had one of those days, like something bad happens, like, you know, you're watching your team play and they lose or you get bad news at work or you're frustrated, your car breaks down or something, and then you stub your toe on top of it, and that stubbing of the toe feels like you need to have your leg amputated. It feels so because bad because you're frustrated about everything else. Um, I think that's where we're getting a little bit up from Angel Reese here. I think her real frustration is losing and knowing deep down that those people who rooted against her are celebrating her loss. And emotionally, that's what came out last night. That, that, that's how I took it. Because we've all been in a situation where something bad happens, and then that mushrooms into something different. So we're really reacting emotionally to one thing, and then it becomes five other things as you start talking about it or whatever goes on. I think if you're going to live your life on social media, you need to set up some emotional guardrails to it because there's good and bad here with, with Angel Reese. Angel Reese got paid to, to do this SI swimsuit edition. That's, that's her right to do that. Now, that does not give guys or anyone the right to say awful, crude no. things to her on social media because she did it. But she did it, right? So that is her sexualizing herself and doing it for money to go in the SI swimsuit edition. So you know some of that's going to come. Again, the people who did it, not excusing that, not the behavior that's needed. She also made $1.8 million, reportedly, in NIL. That's because she has a ton of social media followers. She's very outspoken on social media, and she marketed that to get what she wanted out of it financially. More power to her. 
That's why NIL exists. Angel Reese, we said a year ago, uh, along with Livy Dunn at, at LSU, another example right there at the same school, this is the definition of NIL working the way it's supposed to work. It's actually their name, image, likeness right. that they're utilizing to profit from. People are idiots on social media. People are idiots online. Whoever sent a death threat to her should be prosecuted, quite frankly. Yes. If someone's saying crude, awful things to her, they should be kicked off the platform. They should be dealt with however you need to be dealt with when you're doing stupid things like that. I also think if you're going to market yourself through social media, there has to be some guardrails set up with you emotionally to where I, you're not seeing someone break down to this level and say they have not been happy since winning a national championship, they reached the pinnacle of their sport a year ago, and they have not been happy in the year since then. So there needs to be a little bit of separation of church and state when it comes to that. And deep down when I watch Angel Reese and all of this, Hutton, I see someone who cares a lot about her team, cares a lot about her performance, and gives a damn about winning. And I see someone emotional that they lost and their season's over. And I see someone angry that lost, their season's over, and they know that a lot of America has the satisfaction of her losing to Caitlin Clark based on how she celebrated the win over Caitlin Clark a year ago. I think a lot of that came out in that press conference last night. But she's also saying that she doesn't sound off or doesn't, she's not able to or uh, the platform. I mean, that's exactly what she did over the last year. I mean, immediately uh, after the championship game. Um, Addressing her critics directly post game, 2023, Reese pointed out the difference between reactions to her po poking fun at Clark and Clark poking fun at her and previous opponents. I don't fit into the box y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood. I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. When other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. This was for the people that look like me. That's her sounding off. She's had that platform. And they've discussed that post game throughout the run to the Elite Eight that they just made in trying to make the run back to the national title game. Uh, they've had that platform whenever they want it, uh, even on social media, where she's in all caps saying, I'm not keeping it cute. You know, so like, yes, she's had that platform. And if you're going to do that, there's going to be mixed reaction and you're going to hear from people. Yeah, either way. I mean, look, I can't control someone's emotional response to something. I'd have preferred that she played the villain throughout. Well, at 21, it's, and, a, it's a mixed bag. Yeah, too. but I mean, I, I, what I'm saying is I would have liked if she just came out and remained defiant. She said, well, I'm, I think I'm, she is. I'm unapologetically me. A lot of you can't deal with that. I see a lot of negative stuff and stupid stuff online. Don't care. I, I am who I am. I'm going to continue to be that. Congrats to Caitlin right. Clark. We won our national championship. Now she gets a chance to go win hers at the Final Four. And uh, I'm proud of my teammates and fought as hard as I could. I would have loved a defiant response like that. Um, I don't think she's trying to play victim here. But she's playing the victim here. Well, and her team. And I think the are, emotional response to losing yeah. is causing her to play the victim. And I do not see Angel Reese as a victim. And some of those statements you're reading right there, Hutton, that's not the voice of a victim. No. Last night was the voice of a victim. Well, and they in defeat, she sounded like a victim. Prior to that, her teammates are defending her before her uh, before she made her statement. And I'll also say uh, she's likely to come back to LSU. I think she's going to make more money if she does so. Well, right now she's. Uh, a top 10 pick, I believe, but it, it, it don't, I mean, in, it, this is the most memorable matchup. You're going to force me to look at a WBA mock seen. draft, aren't you? Um, I, I heard she's a top 10 pick. You're going to force me to look at one. Be. I'm going I'm to check it out. But we know who the number First one overall ever. pick is, Caitlin Clark. And if she has the chance to be the number one overall pick next year, don't you think that she's going to take that opportunity to come back with the extra COVID year that she could, uh, take advantage of and make more I, money. I, I don't know how any star of her caliber in Doesn't the women's college game would not come back. I, I am honestly surprised Caitlin Clark. Now that I know the boyfriend situation in Indiana, it makes a little bit more sense, but I, I'm surprised she, she didn't come back. Also I'm looking right now, Hutton, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Angel Reese projected seventh overall, okay. according to ESPN. Cause last night she declined to declare if she was, what she was doing to the Minnesota Lynx. Okay. Who's, who has the number two pick? The number two pick goes to the Los Angeles Sparks, Cameron Brink okay. from Stanford. There you go. Number three pick, nice. Chicago Sky, Rakea Jackson from Tennessee. The Sparks, they're loaded with picks. They have the second and fourth pick. There you go. In the WMA draft. The Dallas Wings Man. did not know this was a the team. The Wings. 
Now, I've, I've heard of the other teams. I've never heard of the Dallas Wings. They're fifth. The Washington Mystics, sixth. And then your Minnesota Lynx drafting Angel Reese at seventh overall. I think she's back, and, and Clark goes to the fever. What a, what a year to go to Indiana. This just in, the Dallas Wings also have two picks in the top ten, like the, Los, like the L.A. Expansion? Sparks. I don't know. John McClain about to join us. Where's Big time the, reset for that organization is what, it, I, what it, I'm hearing. Yes, Talking is. to my WNBA people, that's what they keep telling me. Where, Watch out for the wings. That's what they keep saying. 